1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. Can you guys read that? Yes. Okay. For as, for as the body is one, hath many members, and all the members of the body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Wherefore we are Jews or Gentiles, we're Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. Let that soak in. It's just not me, just not you, but it's all of us. We make up the body of Christ. And if an ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not of the body? Therefore, it is therefore not of the body. It's a question mark there. If the body were an eye, were, were they hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? So they're trying to say that we all got to work hand in hand together. Yes. This, I love King James, but sometimes it kind of... <laughs> it's funny how, how it's worded. But not hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, yes. as it hath pleased him. So we all have our positions in the body. And if we are all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, but yet one body. Many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again can the head say to the feet, I have known any of you. Mm, I'm getting somewhere here. Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Yes. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon we bestow the more abundant honor in our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely Parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together. Yes, he has. Hath given more abundant honor to the part which has lacked. Amen. Mm. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Amen. We need to care for one another. And wherefore one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. For one member be honored, all the members rejoice in it. Amen. No, now, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Pastor, we pray. Father, we appreciate you today. We thank you for your greatness and your love. Yes. The presence that we have felt here, God. I'm asking you, Lord, let this word soak into my mind, soak into our hearts today, God. Amen. Let this not be an old word, God, but let it be a refreshing of our spirits yes, yes. and a renewing of what we can be in you, God. Lord, I pray the anointing upon Brother Dave today and upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The scriptures are very uh, apparent or plain or blunt, but we can't we can't do this on our own. No. And I love Brother Ron. He is always encouraging. Yes. Always there. Always uplifting. Always let me pray with you. Let me encourage you. I'm praying for you. I love you. That is the type of person that we all need to be. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm going to get into this later on, but sometimes we get busy. We have a busy life. We get busy. But... I can't do this without Pastor. No. I can't do this without Brother Ron. I can't, I can't do this without any of you. No. We can't. Woo. We are the body of Christ. Yeah. So we have to lean on each other right. and pray right. for each other, yeah. encourage each other, yeah. strengthen each other, right. give each other. Yeah. Right. But we, we can't do this on our own. No. I can't do this without you, Sister Donna. No. I can't do this without you, Sister Bernice. No. I can't do this without your brother Matt. I can't do it without. We gotta do. We gotta work together. Yes. Now I'm a, I'm a, we're live, ain't we, brother? Yes. We too many churches these days. It's like, well, if they don't have the fancy clothes on, then I'm not going to associate myself with that dialect over there sitting in the corner. 
if they don't have, come on now, I'm being realistic here. Just bring them in. This guy's crazy. She just used to be like, but how many times have you heard somebody, I had somebody tell us the other day that there was somebody that walked in the back of this big old church uh -oh. and, the pat, and, and, and he was all in rags and dirty and hair not combed and, and didn't shave and just sat in the back and no one spoke to him. No. Nobody talked to him. Nobody shook his hand. Nobody knew him. Yeah. Well, the thing was, at the end of service, this was a church that was needing a new pastor. <coughs> now you know where I'm getting ready to get to, I think. <coughs> they, had a, they had a committee yeah. that elected a pastor to govern this church, but no one knew who this pastor was. So the board member comes up and he said he wanted to he wanted to announce who the new pastor of this church was going to be. And the man that was sitting in the back that nobody wanted to talk to, nobody wanted to shake his hand because he was the one that was elected to be pastor of that church. I say all that to say this. We have to come together as a body and show love and show compassion and show care. And, and, and no matter how they look, no matter how they smell, no matter how what they... What they we have to show love and compassion to them. And there might be some people that's like, man, I just wish. That's right. And I pray for them. And you got, but you got to show love and compassion. That's right. But also, on the flip side of that, you also got to be careful right. of, of uh, what you are allowed on the platform. Oh, yeah. Right. Careful what you allow in your leadership. Right. Careful what you are allowing to right. come right. into the church right. to some extent. Right. Got to be wise. Right. Yeah. But again, we have to all do this together. Right. Understand that we are the body of Christ. And we make up the body of Christ. We are we represent the body of Christ. Amen. We are ambassadors right. of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. We represent him and how we act, right. how we look, right. how we dress. Yeah. I put a I put a thing on Facebook today. I don't know if you guys seen it or not. And this preacher was preaching, and he was talking to the women. Yes. And he, was, and he was telling the women that some of you young women, is, and we don't have this problem here, but some of the young women, they, they need to, if they if they can't sit down and 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 then and they're showing their legs and they have to keep on tugging, that you, you need, might need to get you a little bit longer of a skirt on. Yeah. You might need to pull your top up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you have to be careful. But you also have to be wise, That's right. and you have to be smart, right. and you have. To, there's a lot. There's a lot that comes to in leadership That's true. of how to act, how to talk, how to present yourself. Because we are the body of Christ. We are representatives of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we get on to our kids, say, "Hey, that's a little bit too tight. That's a little bit too short. That's a little bit. That's a little bit. That's a little bit." That's a little bit. And you go back in there, and and, and, and so they they sometimes a lot of times they'll respect it and go and and put something different on it because we represent Jesus Christ. We represent holiness. We're not just being mean to y'all, but we want people to see Jesus within us. Whenever we speak from the word of God and we speak about the things that we believe and teach right. it's not to be mean but it's right. following the word of God because right. we are representatives of Jesus Christ Amen. how do you connect to your brothers and your sisters in the congregation we must lean on each other Good. we must pray for one another yes, we yes. must trust in each other right I have a question. Do you go through a list of names and really pray for them and think about them? That's right. Do you? How do you serve your brothers and sisters in Christ? Weekly, daily. Some are limited. And I'm guilty.
guilty. I don't text everybody all the time. I know pastors don't text everybody all the time. We get busy. We have a life. We, my mom called me today. I thought you were coming up. My mom I was just over there yesterday. I was busy. I mean, I can't come over there every day. I, I mean, I, not for a long period of time at least. Because we get busy. We get busy. How do you stay connected to the body? Remember, was it the foot bones connected to the ankle bones? The ankle bones connected to the uh, I don't know how it goes, but you remember that old song. We can't, we can't do this without each other. We're all connected together. We're all connected. So whenever somebody is missing, it's like somebody's lost their finger. Somebody's lost their toe. Yep. Somebody's lost their arm. Right. So whenever people's missing, right. it's, it's it's like we're walking like this. That's right. Because we're not all... We're, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, yeah, right. whenever... We all got to work work together and everything. Right. Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. How many times are we, are we doing this on Tuesday nights? Because so many people's missing. And sometimes that's how we feel. Right. Especially when if, if the drummer has to go to a volleyball game and he can't be here or a choir or, and, and I or, or whatever. I mean, when the ill has gone, that's like eight people. That's a fourth of the church almost. Anyways. But it's we can't do this without each other. Right. No. That's right. <coughs> What if someone says, well, I just feel left out? What do you mean? Think about your actions or your words when you say you feel left out. That means somebody, that's meaning, whenever you say that, that's meaning that somebody has forgotten you, overlooked you, and isn't considerate of you. So really be careful about what you're saying. Because you're accusing somebody, they have forgotten about you, they've overlooked you, they don't think about you, they don't care about you. You are placing blame on someone else, and that when you are saying, and you are saying that you're the victim of the body of Christ. But understand this: that we are all in this together, and we can't place blame, but we need to be encouraging one another. Hallelujah! Now I know this isn't isn't an issue in our church. But I feel this is an area that we all need to be reminded of, that we are the God's children. We were bought and paid through his blood, yes. through his sacrifice. Yes. Right. But unfortunately, this is a problem in many churches today. Yes. Right. And if we can ever get to the point, if you ever get to the point that you feel this way, then I ask you, who was the last person that you offered help to? When was the last time that you took $20? You woke up in the morning, got a $20 bill in your pocket, and said, I'm going to use this to bless someone today. So, Lord, show me where I need to use this today. When was the last time? When was the last time someone was sick and you just went by the store and picked, and picked some food up for that sick person? And just hung it on their doorknob. Or offered to take an elder's car to get the oil changed or get it washed. Don't forget that whenever we blame the body, we are the body. We're the body. It's our blame. So whenever we're blaming leadership or another saint for their an issue, remember you're kind of blaming yourself. Because we're the body. I mean that's deep. We're the body. Amen. The fact is, no one purposefully, purposefully, is neglecting you, overlooking you, or leaving you out. No. If you feel that you are lonely and disconnected, it is because I'm. This is going. It is because you have isolated and disconnected yourself. Amen. 
If you feel like you're lonely, disconnected, that you feel that you're just out there in left field and no one, no one cares about you, it's a lot of times because you have done it to yourself. Amen. You talk to sinners, you talk to different people that's living a, 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 living a lifestyle and they're, and they're not happy with the way things are going in their life and everything's going wrong. And a lot of times they've caused that to be on themselves. Right, right. Amen. And a lot of times the people would just wake up and smell the coffee, per roses, se. Roses. Smell the roses. Get a wake-up call. What if, what if the person that's making your life so easy all of a sudden wasn't there no more? What if that person lost that trust fund? What if that person no longer qualified for certain benefits? What if that person no longer got that check right. anymore that you've benefited from? Right. What you going to do? Right. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, in her situation, at a certain point in time, you're no longer going to receive that check. Right. What are you going to do? That's true. When that, whenever you... Five, six years from now, you're, and you're no longer going to be el eligible for that check. Right. What are you going to do to better your life? That's right. I mean, you just want to like, oh, I guess I'll just be homeless. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to have things. He wants to, you to be blessed. He wants you to, but you know, he ain't going to stick you with a fork and make you do it. No, no. He's given us free will to better our lives. Right. I've told my daughter this. I said, I refuse to live the way I lived whenever I was her age. I refuse to conform to the life that I lived. I was telling my wife the other day that whenever I went to school, mm -hmm. I, had, I ate mayonnaise, bread, and cheese every day. And if I didn't eat that, I would eat some tuna or I'd eat some crackers and cheese. And I had some Kool-Aid. And I was just thankful. That's right. Because I had something to eat. Right. I didn't like peanut butter. But I'm just saying, I didn't want my daughter, and I don't want my family to live the way I had to live. That's right. Pastor Owens is, I know he's he's done the same thing for his family and makes sure he strive, strive to make sure his boys and his family doesn't have to go through what he went through as a young child and, and, I, and, I, and I want to try to strive to, to be the best person I can be, best husband I can be best father, and am I perfect? ask my family, I am not perfect <laughs> Sister Brina says no no way <laughs> Do I have a temper? Absolutely. You guys have not seen it, but but I do. Sister, I only seen my temper one time. I stand at the door. Oof, she didn't like it none. You know, I got. I'm human. So I tell my wife, I said, "Honey, I'm human. I ain't perfect." You know, if you pinch me, it's gonna hurt. Sometimes I think she's not human. Nothing that bothers her half the time. She's just an angel. I told you I was married. Right? I know. He did tell me that I married. I, I said, brother, but you don't see those horns sometimes that I see. <laughs> but you know what? I was telling somebody that day. Is I am blessed. Yes, you are. I am truly blessed. I have um, had past relationships that was not so kind. To, right. to me or to my daughter. And I am truly blessed. Oh, yes. I'm truly blessed for my in laws. They right. do so much for us. Amen. They know they do much for the church. I'm, I cannot be more blessed and thankful for the family that I have, even Sabrina. Amen. <laughs> Every once in a while, I try to get on her good side and get her some flaming hot Cheetos. Oh. You know, <laughs> then she might like me for a few minutes. <laughs> She's a good girl, though. Yeah. And I'm blessed for yes. Savannah. I'm blessed for Mason. Yeah. And I'm going to brag on them. Yes. We got a, 
paper in the mail today or the other day saying how good they're doing in school, how, how their grades have improved, their attitudes improved, everything's improved, how Mason made, a, made an A the other day on his math test. I mean, so... And so I'm so I'm blessed that God's blessing them, helping them. Do they still go through things? Absolutely. Do they still have issues? Absolutely. But I'm so thankful for them. My daughter makes good grades. Straight A student. Very thankful for her. I don't want to leave her. Sabrina, honor student. I seen her report card the other day. I think I maybe seen maybe one or two B's and. All A's and A pluses, just straight honor student makes. I mean, I'm proud of her too. You know, we have. I'm, I'm very blessed. Oh yes, you are. I'm very blessed. Yeah, I like to embarrass them in front of a bunch of people. Just like whenever I proposed to Lisa in front of the whole church a couple That's years ago. Right. Remember that? When I embarrassed her, I like doing that sometimes. But I'm gonna get back to my. We we are the body of. So we all got. We all in this together. How many times have you heard some? Heard someone complain, well, I was sick for two weeks and pastor didn't even call out to pray for me. <laughs> really? James says, if you're sick, call on the elders of the church. Does your pastor have ESP or something? You just expect him? To, you got, we got to do our part. We must do our part. Well, some people say, well, there's just no place for me here. Too many people are looking for an excuse not to go to church, not to be part of a church, not to be used, not to be not to be in mingled in, with the crowd, not to be the body of Christ. But we have, I mean, we're all in this together. They and they wonder why their spiritual walk is in jeopardy. Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25. Hebrews chapter 10. 24 through 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together Amen. as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another. Amen. And so much more as you see the day approaching. As we see the day approaching. God loves you. God cares about you. God needs you. We need you. We need to show love, show compassion, show, and, and we need to do everything in our part to let people know that Jesus loves you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Susan, Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes. God loves Glory, you. Yes, yes. Jenny, God loves you. That's right. You, know, you missed last Sunday. That's right. God loves you. Amen. She was in church in another location. She was visiting some a friend. In uh, another area, but she was in church. We we all can, I mean, we all need a vacation from time to time. We all need to go. But brother pastor keeps on telling me, when, when are you going to be going on on, a, on another? You, you need to pick some family time. He's trying to kick me out of here already. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, we all need to get away sometimes. Yes. And uh, we got vacation coming up in June. And I'm ready for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> And another popular phrase, well, no one ever asked me to do anything in the church. Sister Margie does it all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we must learn to participate and be an encouragement in the body of Christ. Amen. And let's stay involved in growing the kingdom of God. Amen. We've got to learn to put some effort right. ourselves. There you go. There you go. Where's that broom at? Where's those gloves at so I can clean the bathroom toilet? Let's. I, I want. I want to do something. Better be having a church work day. Well, well brother, I, my body, I just can't do it no more. Okay, that, that's okay. Well, pray. Pray for God and give us strength. Pray for God. Pray for God. Pray for Sister Marty's back as she's working hard, and Sister Susie and, and Sister Owens and, and different ones that are, that are working. Pray for them. Give them encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Marty. Thank you, Sister Susie. Thank you, Sister Thank Give encouragement. Pat them on the back. You're doing a great job. This is this is common church etiquette. Sure is. Common church etiquette. 
And whenever this type of etiquette is not being shown in churches, there might be a church might have people in it. But are they really connected? Are they really strong? Because a body can be connected, but if it has a broken bone, it don't work so good. That's Hannah. You know, she's got a, she's over here in a boot, can't hardly walk. She's got her crutches going on and everything. She that leg, that foot's still there. Amen. But there's some ligaments that's stretched. Sometimes it makes me stretch thin, but we're we're doing so much. I know sometimes it's me and Lisa and Sister Owens. We feel like we're just doing. We we do a whole lot. You know, Brother Owens doing a whole lot. But you know what? We have a, an awesome pastor, yeah. Sister yeah. Pastor, great yeah. leadership in this church. When we strive for God to bless this, we pray for God to bless yes. this church. I put a thing on, on Facebook the other, the other day, and then it was yesterday morning, that we're praying for God to bless us, to bless this church, to bless us financially, to bless us to, our, to get some more rock out there, to bless us for the finances to come in, to bless the people that's coming in, for us to be able to get another bigger church for us. Amen. we, we got to pray and speak in faith. That's the first thing I said, we got to speak and talk in faith. Drop by faith. Amen. We must learn to participate Amen. and be an encouragement in the body. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stay involved. Amen. You know, I stay real busy sometimes on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, I go visit. But you know, there's revivals, conferences, camps. Yeah. Um, I put on here men's and women's breakfast. And other church related activities. We need to have another men's breakfast. We need to have women's breakfast. We need to, we need to have shopping days for the ladies. Amen, Sister Owens? Amen. You know, we need to have we need to have time to fellowship with each other more than once a year. Because an active church is a growing church, a busy church, a growing church. Growing churches that flourish that are running hundreds of people is because they're a busy church. And they're all connected. Because they are the what? The body of Christ. I'm getting getting ready to end here shortly. Sometimes some people feel left out. But we must understand that we have our schedules like I was talking about earlier. We have our own agendas. We get caught up in you know, building this little world that we live in. And so many times it leads to emptiness. And many people want to yeah. turn it around and blame the church or blame the pastor for their feelings of disconnection. But understand that we cannot blame God for our mistakes no. or for our actions, for He has given us free will. Yes, amen. In closing, I want I must strive to connect and to learn to serve and be a servant of God. Amen. If you see your brother in need, meet it. Amen. If you hear of a burden, pray. Amen. When someone seems to need encouragement, be ready to speak the word of love and encouragement Amen. into their lives. Right. Slow down. Shake the weights off Amen. that keep you distracted from the body. And plug into what is going on. Make your calendar and your agenda as close to what the body is doing together. Encourage, uh, and encourage others to do the same. We can't do this on our own. We can't do this on our own. It will be amazing how connected you become. Remember, Legos just don't come together by themselves. Do they, Mason? They just don't just... You gotta put them together. Connection happens on purpose. We are not the victim of the body, but we are the body of Christ. Let us strive to be better and Christ-like and understand that we are in this together. I looked up something a while ago. And I wanted to read. There's a song. It's a worship, praise and worship song. It says, if, 
if we are the body? It says, we are the body. Why aren't our arms reaching? That's right. Why aren't our hands yeah. healing? That's right. Why aren't our why aren't his words teaching? If we are the body, why aren't our, his feet going? Why is his love not showing? That's right. There is a way. There is a way. We have to do our part. Yes, we, do. we have to go compel them to come in. And it's just not me, Pastor, Sister Owens, and Sister, oh, no, it's but it's everyone. Everybody. And I and I keep on saying this. Get on your Facebook. Message. Share our videos. It don't take two seconds to get on there and push share. I share it to groups. I share it to yard sale sites all over Papa Bluff, all over Southeast Missouri. I got I got us I got our videos all over Indiana. I got some in Florida. I got I, I share, I share, and I share. Because who knows what this man or this man or this man or this woman or this woman, who knows what we're gonna say to somebody two or three hundred miles away that might lead them to an apostolic church. In their area. Come on, man. Sometimes you guys, my family. Sometimes I'm hard nosed and mean and, and strict. And, but in the end, if we don't show love and compassion. We're not doing what we need to be doing. Jesus. I try to be wise, but not get ran over, not get pushed over, right. not get taken advantage of. And that's hard sometimes. Because I want to be this way, but I know I can't be that way. I know pastor, he, he rules with an iron fist. Because he's the pastor, he's our leader. Yes. He wants what's best for this church. But sometimes it's hard. And you really want to see that person come to God. When you really want to see that person at the altar. When you really want to see that person seeking the Holy Ghost. When you really want to see that person living a holy and righteous life. It's hard. There's decisions that leaders, pastors have to make. It's hard. There's decisions that husband and wives and it's hard to make decisions sometimes. Sometimes the decisions the kids don't like. But trust me, it's for y'all's own good. <laughs> because we gotta be connected. I can't do this without her. And you guys can't do this without each other. I hope this was a blessing to you all. This is what God gave me. Don't never forget we are the body of Christ. Let's continue doing our part. If we do our part, God will do His part. If we're faithful to God, what do I say? He'll be faithful to you. Just keep on worshiping the Lord, Sister Owens, Pastor Owens, I turn it to you.